Welcome to SVG TV News for Friday, June 17th, 2022. I am Rochelle Batiz with the details. The University of the West Indies Seismic Research Center has been awarded the 2022 Volcanic Surveillance and Crisis Management Award for managing Lasso Frere Volcano Crisis here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The award was given by the International Association of Volcanology and Chemistry of the Earth's Interior, IAVCHI. The UWI Seismic Research Center was nominated for the award by pairs at the Volcano Monitoring Units in the United States and New Zealand. Professor Richard Robertson, who was in charge of the Volcano Monitoring Unit for Lasso Frere Volcano, tells SVG TV News the UWI Seismic Research Center came out on top in most of the categories that were assessed by the association. Context. Um, we kind of came out on top in most areas because if you think of it, successful hazard assessment and mitigation efforts, certainly in the context of um, the eruption just, just went on in St. Vincent, which was, which was the primary, um, I think, case that they used, we would, have, we would have engaged in successful hazard assessment and mitigation efforts. We would have done hazard maps, and that's what NEMO would have used to, to respond. And then in terms of effective volcano surveillance, obviously we would have had to effectively surveil surveil the volcano monitor it um, to be able to then give forecasting of the eruption and then effective crisis management we were closely involved as you know with the management of the whole operation with demo mm -hmm. so i think we kind of scored i suspect that we would have called highly in, in all categories that they would have looked at and based on that they would have decided that that we should get the award. Dr. Robertson says the team at the UWI Seismic Research Center is ecstatic about the award and he believes it is well deserved in light of the tremendous amount of work that went into monitoring Lasso Freire Volcano. It's recognition. Uh, I'm glad for it because, personally, because I, I mean, I, I used to be director of Seismic once and I, and, and I work at Seismic and I know how hard people work and I know how hard they would have worked over the last year as a team. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they would feel quite well that their, their peers in the international community have recognized their efforts. Um, I can tell you that, you know, we, for me, I, I'm, I'm not totally surprised that they did because I can see from the response of the international community to what Seismic did last year. It was always, you know, the interactions I had with people. If I meet them in a meeting, if I meet them, you know, in a conference, or anywhere I went, it was always very good things um, that was being said. So uh, it's, it's kind of a reinforcement that that is always good. I think to be recognized by your peers for your hard work. Professor Robertson says it is time for regional governments to recognize the importance of the UWI Seismic Research Center and give the organization the financial backing it requires. But it's good and we feel good about it. I personally feel quite good about it for staff here and for Seismic. But it's kind of a two-edged sword in that it also reminds me that we are so poorly resourced and we are so poorly supported by the governments that contribute to us and it really it, it really amazes me still um, and I'm not speaking here <laughs> in a sense on behalf of Seismic but I'm speaking here in terms of Richard Robinson, a geologist who has worked in this field for a long time and at Seismic. It puzzles me that despite the fact that we do such fantastic work and here we are clearly recognized that still we struggle every day for our survival. We don't have enough money to do what we need to do, and constantly is a struggle. You really, you really should be, the region should be recognizing the excellence in a tangible way. Um, the world has recognized it. It's time for the region to do that. Emergency response teams participated in a simulation exercise today to test their readiness for the 2022 hurricane season. The exercise, hosted by the Ministry of Education and National Reconciliation, was staged in the Bukament Bay area, which is regarded as one of the most hazard-prone areas on mainland St. Vincent. Students of the Leeward District Seventh-day Adventist School, the Bukament Bay Community Disaster Response Team, the Bukament Bay Polyclinic and the Red Cross were all involved in the two-hour exercise today. We hear more in this report. Broken bones, cuts and bruises, and even children missing at sea. These were some of the scenarios which were included in the disaster simulation exercise staged at the Bukament Bay River. 
The disaster scenario was a flash flood, which resulted in multiple casualties, including children being washed away by the river. Students evacuated the school, police and Coast Guard were alerted, and the Bukamant Bay Community Disaster Response Team, CDRT, mobilized to assist the injured children. Coordinator of the exercise, Kathy Badenoch, describes the Bukamant Bay area as troubled. She also notes the eruption of La Soufre volcano has deposited a significant amount of debris into the riverbeds, which can pose a threat to houses and businesses in the area in the event of heavy rainfall. In this scenario, we are testing how the various stakeholders are going to respond in the event of a flood. The Bukamant Bay area has been troubled every year, multiple times every year, by flooding. Since the eruption of the Lassifer volcano, we would have had a lot of debris in the hillsides. If there is any significant amount of rainfall due to a meteorological event, we are expecting a lot of that to wash down to really put whatever systems that are in place at the river to the test. How those are going to be affected we do not know. We think it is best to be prepared instead of waiting for something to happen and then respond. She says it is critical that communities across the island are trained in emergency response, especially for flash floods. Unfortunately we have had loss of life um, as a result of floods to not just in this area but other areas in St. Vincent. Um, livelihoods are also greatly affected. A lot of persons rely on fishing as a source of livelihood. So all of these things have been affected by floods, flooding. Um, the last significant one we had would have been 2016, but of course persons would remember to a large extent the 2013 Christmas Eve floods. So. Yes, flooding, the results of flooding, the consequences of flooding, they are very alive in our memories in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. She commends the CDRT and Bukumant Bay residents for their commitment to the exercise and made a call for Vincentians to work towards becoming certified in emergency response. Um, I would have preferred to see more community involvement, um, but I think as we go along, as we work on these things, as we make persons aware of the need to participate and the need to be a part of something in their community that can affect their lives and their progress and their livelihoods, that we are going to see more interaction and more assistance from persons. Santa Krushank, president of the CDRT, admits that the exercise was a challenging one as they only had a small team on hand. Our team is a small team and all persons were not available to respond immediately, but the persons who were here along with a few members of the community assisted us. We did not have the use of a stretcher so we had to do a lot of lifting on our own and most of us are females really. We had to maneuver around to get over where the, the injured persons were so it was a little bit difficult but because we had the tr we have training in, in, in this, we were able to rise to the challenge and do the best that we could in this situation. The response from the SVG Coast Guard and the police force were noted to be areas where improvements can be made. Reporting for SVG TV News, Christina Smith. Thank you, Christina. And more than 200 Arrowwood farmers from North Windward receive financial assistance valued at approximately $1 million EC dollars. This assistance was given to farmers who suffered because of the eruption of Lassafre volcano, which interrupted farming, harvesting, post-production of Arrowwood and its byproducts. During a short ceremony for the handing out of the monies on Thursday, Minister of Agriculture, Supporter Caesar, said that a document was drafted to be taken to Cabinet for approval of the payments to be made, which was immediately approved by Finance Minister Camilo Gonzalves and Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalves. Minister Caesar says the Arut industry is important to SVG and critical to the people of North Windward. He assured the farmers of government's commitment to ensuring the survival of the Arut industry. He noted that no Arut was purchased from farmers for this year, hence the incentive to assist the farmers. 
Meanwhile, parliamentary representative for North Windward, Montgomery Daniel, says he is extremely happy to be with the farmers as he has walked the same road they have and understands their struggle. He says the eruption of La Sofre volcano happened at the heart of the harvesting season of our root. Some farmers had already harvested and others had not. Consequently, not all would have collected monies. He says government therefore made a decision for all farmers to be paid. Hence, the payment structure was established for payments to be made in 2021. He said the situation in 2022 is about offering some level of compensation to farmers for their crops as they are still unable to produce and harvest our root while the area is still recovering from the effects of the volcanic eruption. Also on Thursday, Minister Daniel and Minister of Agriculture Saboto Caesar distributed ice boxes and other fishing supplies to fishermen in Obia and Fancy. Speaking at the handing over or at the Obia Fisheries Complex, Minister Caesar encouraged the fisher folk to keep up the good work as he noted a significant growth has been recorded in the fisheries sector. Right now where Internationally, food security is a problem, but we don't have a food security problem in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Fish is always available, it is accessible, and it is affordable. So continue to do your excellent work. In St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we are seeing a significant growth in the fisheries sector. Of course, you have seen over the last four or five years, significant traffic products coming out of the OEA facility. Not only in OEA have we seen the operationalization of the center, but a similar thing is taking place in Calaqua, in Barley, Kingstown with the input warehouse, in Beckway with Beckway Seafoods, and also in Union Island. Minister Daniel told the gathering that shortly after becoming the era rep, representative, he spoke with the Prime Minister to have something done for fishers in the area. When I became the representative of this constituency, I said, no, I have to do something to help the fishers much more than I've been doing. One morning, 17 boatloads of jacks from, from a seine just right out here. But of that catch, that morning, 30 boatloads of jacks came out of that one catch. I say that to say that at the time, Kingstown was the main area as to which our fish catch would have gone. And outside of Kingstown, Oria was the second place in St. Vincent and the Grenadines where the fish catch was the highest outside of Kingstown. So I used to own a boat. And one morning they called me, one midday they called me and they said, look, the boat coming. It seems as though you have to go and get a raft to go and meet the boat because like it's sinking. At that time, the fellas had to refuse fish. They had to stop catching fish. And they brought over 500 heads of fish right here in Uwe. So I know what I'm talking about. Senior Fisheries Officer Chris Isaacs said that the items distributed to the fisher folk were received through two projects and they are meant to aid the fishermen and women in the area to maintain the quality of fish supply. What we have here is uh, materials that would have been gotten through two projects, through FAO, as well as through monies from the, the government. Uh, we have ice boxes, as both ministers would have spoken about, to help with the quality of fish. We have some wires that would go towards making fish pots to increase our catches. Lines, again, to help our fishers to increase. Safety equipment, life jackets. We have some jackets here to help you when you're at sea. And in the box as well, 
we have something to help you when you land the fish <laughs> and come to distribute. So all of this is to help our fishers and move our salmon and Grandines forward as a better fishing industry. In other news now, we hear that Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez said that some critics of regional airline Liat are now wishing that the airline was back in operation. This comes as he on radio on Wednesday outlined the challenges facing regional flights to and from as SVG. The Prime Minister said that though it is not possible for Liat to get back to its former state as Liat 1974 Limited, the airline can come back in an updated state but will require more governments on board. The shareholder governments of the regional of the former regional carrier are Antigua, Barbados, Dominica, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Criticisms from people who, who didn't understand. I forgave them. But they know not what they were talking about. And some were, they were so, they were most assured about that which they were most ignorant. Very assured in all their criticisms. That's not what worried me. Is when the legacy issues with pi some pilots, some engineers, some flight attendants, and certain managerial practices, I say, you know, and of course, when other governments not wanting to participate, there's a limit to the burden. There's a limit to the burden. But I live to see to see people now clamoring. And I was amazing. Some of the critics now pretending that they were long in favor of Liat. Speaking on the issues with the monies owed to former Liat workers, BM Gonzalez said that due to the bankruptcy of the airline, these workers will not be able to get paid. And he maintained that the shareholder governments are not legally liable to make these payments. I had told when the workers, or some of the workers were behaving in an unreasonable manner, I said, look, when Liat, Liat, is, Liat, Liat is essentially insolvent, you're not going to be able to get any money from the company. And the governments are not legally liable. They're shareholders, but there is a limited liability company. This is the point I'm making. And mm -hmm. the, the, I haven't received final reports as to what is happening in relation to the administration under the laws of Antigua and Barbuda. And of course, um, we, you know, the, 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 it's a painful thing for workers to have worked many, many years. And then um, they just, they let their, their line collapse, but they, they, don't, they don't have anything there to get legally. And um, I guess we have to find some way to, to see how we can we, we, we can um, address some of this. But it's a lesson also for workers and management in a company that you have to behave responsibly. The Carnival Development Corporation today announced the Calypsonians selected from the preliminaries to compete in the semi-final. The graduates and upstage Calypso 10 secured the most picks with each with eight each. They are followed by on tour with secure six picks. The graduates picks for the semis are Glenroy Sule Caesar, Maxwell Tajo Francis, Kingsley Hero Roberts, Cleopatra Cleopatra Hendrickson, Koskinski Bosterski Adams, Damien Boniman Noel, Glenroy Homie Delplesh, and Felicia Numbian Empress Alexander. The upstate semi-finalists are Fitzroy Brother Ebony Joseph, Augustnell G.C. Cupid, Joanna Numbian Princess Christopher, Sheena Collis, Alpheus Observer Duncan, Omani Cupid, Christina Ludacris Christopher, and Cecile Littlebit Murray. The six on tour semi-finalists are Elvis Abijah Abbey, Marvo Morgan, Robert Patches Knight, King, Derek Mansick Alexander, Grantley Iper Constance, and Alvin Zionai Denny. The two reserves are Godwin Gao 
Oliver and Malcolm Mashi Marshall. These Calypsonians are asked to meet with representatives of the CDC and other officials on Saturday, June 18th at 10 in the morning at the Victoria Park. Representatives from the two bands, Blazing Fire and the Festival Band, are also asked to be in attendance. The 2022 Calypso semifinals is scheduled for Friday, June 24th at the Victoria Park, commencing at 8 p.m. SVG today joined the international community in commemorating the United Nations Convention to combat desertification and drought day 2022 under the team Rising Up from Drought Together. The Forestry Services Unit in the Ministry of Agriculture, in collaboration with the Calico Anglican Primary School, hosted a tree planting exercise on the school's compound. Speaking at the tree planting exercise, representative of the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification and Drought, Dr. Richard Byron Cox said praise the grade four and five students of the Calico Anakin School for their effort. Talk to this school, to the leadership of the school, and they agreed that we can have this special program for the children today, right? Um, we've had a fantastic program. The children from other parts of the world welcomed the children of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to this project. So you had um, schools from, let's say, Azerbaijan and schools in Mali sending their greetings to St. Vincent and so on. The children had a quiz on land, they had presentations on land, and uh, now we are planting, as you can see down the road there, trees, okay? So it has been a comprehensive um, package, if one could say that, in the short space of time. The children were also part of an online session with children from different parts of the world. The children also pledge that that they will protect the land of SVG for the, rest, for the rest of their lives. Dr. Byron Cox said that the aim of the exercise is to get the children to become more environmentally conscious and form partnerships to deal with global issues such as climate change. Everything in their life, in one way or the other, is connected to their land. The food, the water, the air, the basics. Two is that we have a global problem in, in terms of trying to do proper sustainable land management. Now it's a global problem, it's not just a, a Vincentian problem. And therefore they have to learn to work with the rest of the world. So we are inculcating in children today that tomorrow you'd have to work with Russia. People who are different from you, who speak a different language, who, looks diff who look different from you. But you have to work with them if you want to fix the global problem. Okay, so, so this is one of the things that, 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 that happens. That's, we're trying to, to, to teach the children you have to learn to work together as a team in this world to fix this. Thirdly, what we're trying to do is to ensure that this is the island, this is important to understand, that St. Vincent is a very small place as regards land. If Brazil loses a thousand acres of productive land, it's really nothing to them. It's a huge country. Brazil is like, as I always say, it's like a shepherd with a million sheep. St. Vincent is a tiny place. This is the shepherd with one sheep. And if that sheep dies, he ain't no shepherd anymore. You can envision that this being a piece of land that is destroyed by either man or nature. And in order for us to make this land be better for us to live, for no one in the future, we have to cover it. And we are going to demonstrate how we will do this today. Now, all of us, as human beings, have a responsibility to protect our surroundings, our environment. And we can do this, if you notice, we have plants. We, have, we could have different types of plants, but these are some smaller plants. And we would be establishing a, a green platform. So all this area here that is being, what, what I say, wasted, all right? We would attempt to plant some, some trees here. In other news, Managing Director of MAFCOM, 
Paul Morris is calling on Vincentians to acknowledge, to acknowledge fathers who are trying and give them a pat on the back. His comments were made ahead of Father's Day, which is being celebrated on Sunday, June 19th. Mavcom, which is an information and communication technology firm here in SVG, has launched a Father's Day campaign aimed at raising awareness on the positive impact of a father's involvement in a child's life. The Father's Day campaign includes a number of initiatives, such as a school essay competition on the importance of fathers and a panel discussion highlighting the need for fathers to be a part of their children's lives. Morris tells us with TV News he hopes Father's Day will be a day where fathers are praised and not criticized. Fathers were trying a pat on the back. It is a day when you recognize fathers. There's a lot of negative things out there. I'm not claiming that a lot of it isn't deserved. I'm just saying let us not always focus on cursing the darkness. Let us praise the light which is there. So let's take that day and really acknowledge the men who are trying. And also there are young men among us who they want to try, but they didn't have a positive role model as a father. So on that day, let's take a moment and give them an example and give them maybe a map of you know what it is like to be a father, rather than taking that day again to lament all of the negatives that presently exist. Morris says Mofscom Father's Day campaign also seeks to challenge the notion that fathers being involved is an option. Too often uh, from both genders, you could sometimes get this sense that, you know, mother is needed, but a father is optional, except for finances. We want to challenge that. I know if you ask a person, they would not verbally say that, but the behavior is often reflective of, of one where father's involvement is optional. We want to challenge that. Studies show that a father's involvement has a positive impact on the child's development in so many ways, academic, psychological, self-esteem, emotional, physical, very importantly for our society, a father's positive impact reduces the probability that a child is going to be involved in antisocial and violent behavior, which you know, is a big thing, right? That would save a lot of the issues we have in society if, if we have it. MAFCOM is encouraging persons to join the campaign by posting photos of their fathers on social media platforms on Father's Day using the hashtag a daddy's impact. Thank <music> you.